Hey fellow Bank Air Warriors, Nick here. Now today I'm going to be making a 40 pound PVC bow without a flattening jig. Let's get started. So here I have some 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipes. Now these were all picked up from the hardware store and I'm going to be testing them to see if they're tough enough to be made into a bow. Hopefully at least one of these will work. So I'm just covering it in a little bit of cloth just so the pieces don't get everywhere. If it does explode, yep, okay, that one fails. Okay, this is still a fail. All right, last one. Perfect. So I've cut my pipe down to 48 inches. I've marked the center at 24, two inches out from that for my handle, and then six inches in from either end for the recurved tips. First thing I'm going to do is start working on my mid limbs. That's usually where I start work on a bow like this. And I'm going to do that by heating up between this end of the handle mark at two inches till roughly the end. We'll see how this end turns out. But here we go. Alright, so now I'm just going to take a towel and start pressing from the handle mark down to the end. You just keep pushing and just feel where it's starting to cool down. In the spots where it's starting to cool down, you want to press a little harder. And you're trying to get a sort of a taper, but you actually want this to taper down into the mid limb and then out to the tip, as opposed from a straight taper from the handle. Now since there's not as much room for error in these bows as a tapered one, because with the tapered bow you have a consistent taper to follow, so I like to give the bow just a little bit of deflex, a little more than normal, just to help with any issues like that. Okay, so now that I have that limb, I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing as the other side. I'm just going to go from there and press down to the end. Or not to the end, but to the six inch mark on this side. Okay, so just like the other one, I'm going to add a touch of deflex. Now that my limb tapers are roughed in, I'm going to go back and heat up the handle, make sure everything lines up through the handle, and also squish the handle sideways so that it's a little narrower and it's a little thicker and stiffer. This will help eliminate some hand shock and it will also reduce Archer's Paradox. So now that it's soft and flexible, I'm just going to start squishing the handle in. And while I do that, I'm going to make sure that it's lined up through the limbs. Okay, so here's the handle after shaping. You can see it's a little thinner this way. It's got a nice place to grip. Nice and balanced in the handle. All right, so now I'm going to start working on the tips. So now I'm going to heat up the tip. I'm going to be doing some recurving down here. So I'm going to start by 
heating up down here. We're going to do some recurving, and then we're going to heat up this section up here and do some secondary shaping. Before I get started, I'm just going to make a mark at three inches so I know where to make that transition. Take this, kind of press down from the sides. So what I'm trying to do here is squeeze in from the side so that there's strength at this angle. And make sure it lines up with everything else. Now, I don't want this to be too hard of an angle, so I'm going to round it out a bit. Okay, so I'm doing about five inches of reflex on this. You can see about five inches from this base. So now I'm going to heat this up and work on the tip. Okay, so now I'm just going to press down with this towel. And while I press down, I'm going to maintain the shape that I had. I'm going to press it to about half an inch thick at the very end. I want there to be sort of a double curve here. You can see that, that initial curve, and then I'm going to bring this in a little bit more. So now I'm going to heat up the back of this, and using these locking pliers, I'm going to pinch from about half an inch from the end to this three inch mark and that's going to create our tip. So now you can see I've got the tip and I'm just going to let this cool. But while it's cooling I just need to make sure that everything lines up and that this isn't warped. Here's the tip after shaping. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other side. Once I'm done with that, we're going to go cut this, sand it smooth, and then cut the knox. Alright, so now I've got a file, and I'm going to be making my knock about a half inch from the end here. And just make sure I go straight across, and then I'm going to start by going down about an eighth of an inch deeper than the thickness of the file. So now you can see the tip. I'm just going to bring this in, clean it out, make sure that the edges aren't sharp. This is just a little bit of sandpaper to clean this out. And then Move on to the other side. Now that both of my knocks are finished, I'm going to string this bow up for the first time. So I've got some paracord as a temporary string. Figure out how long of a loop I want. I want it to be about that long. So let's tie a knot. Just a simple overhand knot. Just adjust it, that's about what I want, measure it up, perfect. So now I go to the other side, measure approximately 4 inches on the string, then I tie my new loop, using the other loop as a guide, tie both the same. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to place the string in the loop, bring it to the other side, step through, make sure everything's lined up, and make sure that my knee is in the middle of the bow, not on either limb. Alright, now here's the bow all strung up. You can see that it looks pretty even. Now, I can see here that there's a little bit more bending this way 
that I'd like. You can see this limb is very nice. The bend is mostly right in here, right where I want it to be. This is a little close to the handle, but it's not a big deal. I would still say that this is a good bow, but it does need to be trained a little bit. And by that, you just need to take the limbs and just bend this limb a little more. And you want to do this while you're breaking the bow in. And usually I consider breaking in a bow to be within the first hundred or so shots. So when you're shooting this bow out for the first time, just keep that in mind and just push onto the limb, get it to bend a little bit more. And you can see the flex has actually changed a little bit. It's fixed itself a little bit. And that's what's really nice about PVC. All right, here it is. Feels good. Let's put a few arrows through. It's a nice snappy little bow. Okay, now that I've put about 30 arrows through this bow, I'm going to weigh it, and this should be fairly indicative of what it's going to be once it fully settles down. So I've got a 29 inch arrow on here, so I'm going to draw till an inch from the point, and we'll take our reading. Right, right about there, and we're at about 43 pounds. So I'd say that this bow is probably going to drop to about 40, 41 pounds once it's fully broken in. All right, here it is. Once I've gone ahead and shot this bow out completely, I'm going to finish it up. Hey fellow back there, boyers. Nick here. Now here's the bow that we worked on last week. I went ahead and shot it out. I put about 200 arrows through it and everything's holding steady. It's a little over 40 pounds, so I'm really happy with that. So what we're going to be doing today is just finishing it up. The first thing I'm going to do is spray paint the tips. Now for this particular bow, I'm not going to spray paint the whole thing because I've started going back to tape wrapping bows, which is something that I used to do when I first started getting into this because tape is really nice. It doesn't chip off. It doesn't flake. And if it does get messed up, you can always reapply it. Now one of the things with paint is that over time, it will start to chip or crack in areas where it's flexing. So what tends to happen is that areas like this transitions here, transitions here, out in the handle, and then right along the mid limbs usually start chipping out. And this happens after two to three years or so, maybe even more. And so this is something that, while it won't affect the bow in the beginning, it could affect it later on down the road. I haven't had that problem with tape or cloth wrapping a bow. So what we're going to be doing today is just painting the tips just so they look nice and there will be a little bit of wear but that's all right. The tips usually wear pretty well. And then we're going to be taping the rest of this bow. So I'm just painting both tips and you want to go light. Just do a light coat let it dry for a few seconds, then go back and cover over it again. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I have a nice, even coat on both tips. Now that the paint is pretty much dry, I'm going to start taping this up. And before I get started, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Arthur Street Objects on Instagram for the inspiration for this style of wrap. I've used electrical tape to wrap bows before, but the way he does it with sort of a double layered wrap really gives a nice clean look, something that I've never really done with tape before. So I'm starting out with some electrical tape. This is Scotch brand colored tape. It's a very thin and lightweight electrical tape that I like. And another thing that I really like about this is it's really high quality. It doesn't get sticky or come apart over time. And that's something you want to look for in an electrical tape. So I'm going to start right at the base of this transition here. That way when the string comes down it'll end up resting mainly on the tape and it won't mess up this paint too bad. So I'm going to start 
bringing it around. And then what you want to do is find the center of the previous strip. You want to place the leading edge or the back edge on the center and you want to keep it there. So you want to just keep everything fairly tight as you go. And I'm going to wrap with the blue down to this mark here and then I'm going to switch to my limb color. Okay, so now that I'm down to there, I'm just going to cut this off. Now I've got some green tape that I'm going to use for my main limb wrap. And I'm just going to start taping away. Okay, so now I've come down to this mark, which is one that I made four and a half inches out from the center. That way I can have a nine inch center section, which is a different color than the limbs. So I'm going to wrap down to here and then break it off. And then I'm gonna be wrapping blue from here to here. But before I do that, I'm gonna to go to the other side and I'm just going to wrap the other limb first. Just going to continue the wrapping here. And just wrap the entire center section. You can see that as I'm wrapping over where the arrows have gone, you can still see the faint impression of those marks. And that way I can keep track of where my arrow pass is going to go. Alright, once I get to this end here, I just break it off. And there we go. Now that everything's wrapped, I'm going to use some black electrical tape just to create nice transition points. Just going to apply it everywhere there's a transition from one color to another. And instead of tearing it, I'm just going to cut it so that the edge is nice and clean. And after all the tape is applied, I'm going to go back and put a little bit of super glue right here so that it won't lift. Now that I've wrapped all the transitions, I'm going to be placing my arrow pass and then we'll wrap the rest of the handle. So you can see right here, that's where the marks from the arrows are. They're pretty faint. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but I can see them right there. And I'm going to be placing my arrow pass, which is just half of a piece of a little Velcro pad. Now this is the, the hook side or the hard plastic side of the pad. And I'm using that because it takes a long time to wear through this and this lasts longer than the softer side. But if you wanted the bow to be quieter, then use the softer part of the Velcro. So I'm just gonna remove the backer and then place it right there where the marks are. And the reason why you want to put something like this is because after shooting this bow for a while, especially if your arrows are a little on the rough side, they will start to cut a groove in the side of the bow. And after several thousand arrows, you could potentially cause a weak spot there. So now I'm going to do an overwrap on the handle just to give it a little more grip and make it a little more comfortable. When I put on this grip tape, I want to do it upside down. So I like to measure about four inches on the handle. So it's from about there to here. I'm going to start down here, wrap around, and start wrapping up the handle. 
So now that I've got this line right here nice and clean, I'm going to go ahead and cut the roll off to about five inches. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut it an angle so that I can finish this end off. So I'm going to go put some super glue on all the exposed tape edges and then we can try this thing out. And here we are at 10 yards. Here it is. If you enjoyed finishing this bowl along with me today, please let me know what other things you'd like to see me build in the comments below. And if you like what I'm doing, be sure to check out my channel for other videos like this. And I've also written several books on different topics, and I'll put a link to those in the description below. And if you'd like to help support this channel in a more direct way and ensure I continue doing more videos into the future, be sure to check out my Patreon page. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.